is the Bryant News Broadcast, featuring Chad Sabo with your Bryant updates, Nolan Thompson with the weather, Ryan Walsh with sports, and your hosts, Mike Cronin and Sarah Larity. And now, for your Bryant News Broadcast. Our top story tonight, American military recruiters being told to accept homosexual applicants. The Defense Department announcing that they will comply with the judicial ruling that has struck down the don't ask, don't tell policy that previously banned homosexuals from joining the military. The Justice Department is appealing the decision so recruiters are cautioning new applicants that they may not be around for long. Finally, some good news from the disaster in the Gulf. Earlier this week, the last of the pelicans that were affected by the massive BP oil spill last April were released into the wild, bringing smiles to many rescuers as a job well done. Over 2,000 birds were treated and released as healthy animals from Louisiana to Florida in the past six months. But still, over 6,000 pelicans were found dead due to the harmful effects of the oil slick on their habitat. Also, many other animals are still being treated at facilities such as the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies in Mississippi. It will be a long time until all the wild animals affected are released, but at least this is a first great step. It's so good to hear, finally, good news coming from the Gulf. I mean, you know, obviously this disaster has ended officially with capping the oil, but it's good to see that things are starting to get back to a little bit of normalcy down there. And the people down there have done such a great job. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, we welcome to you another edition of the Bryant News Broadcast. I'm Sarah Larrabee. And I'm Mike Cronin. Switching it right over to weather, here's Nolan. Thanks, guys. How's it going, Bulldogs? Taking a look at the weather, you can see we're in the clear for tonight. And it seems like it's going to stay that way for the rest of the week. This weekend is looking great with only a slight chance of showers on Sunday. And temperatures will be hovering around the mid-50s and low-60s as it seems the fall weather seems to have officially hit us. Well, that's your weather. Now over to Brian with sports. To be the number one school in college football is an honor, prestige on the few and the proud. The past two weeks, it's not been fun being number one. Both number one teams, Alabama and Ohio State, saw their reign at the top end. The problem is small schools such as Boise State are not given a chance to be number one because of their strength of schedule. Them and TCU are such great teams. They knocked off everyone they have played. Boise State hasn't lost a game in its last 30 games. Why aren't they number one? I have no idea. Look, when it's all said and done, I foresee a matchup between Boise State and Auburn for the BCS title game. Now, if Boise State wins the BCS, it will be shaken up for years to come. The NFL this season has been an unpredictable ride. Teams that are 0-5 still have a chance of making the playoffs. And the fact that their chance is not clear, it's been distinct, there's no distinction of good or bad teams, which makes it fun to watch. The Cowboys, however, just want this feeling of this season to be over. They are the most overhyped, overrated team in the NFL. Now sitting at 1-4, a team who season after season loses must-win and statement games is on the hot seat. A team with so much talent and so much hype executes versus others and then penalizes themselves. If the Cowboys want to have any chance at making the playoffs, then someone needs to give them a slap in the face. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Brian. Homer Simpson, a Catholic? At least that's what the Vatican has declared this week. The Vatican newspaper insists that the Simpsons family believe in heaven and that they say their prayers together before meals. It is also stated that beneath the television show's crude jokes lies themes that are linked to the sense and quality of life. However, Simpsons executive producer Al Jean insists that Homer is not Catholic, but says, quote, I guess it makes up for me not going to church in 20 years, end quote. As the Halloween holiday approaches and fall weather rolls into New England, there are many activities that you and your friends can attend apple picking, pumpkin carving, or just going on a trip down 295 to see all the leaves that have changed color. But one of the most exciting events in Rhode Island has to be the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular held at Roger Williams Park Zoo in Providence. The event runs each evening 
until Halloween from 5, 6 to 10 p.m. and is host to over 5,000 carved and illuminated pumpkins. The theme this year is a walk through time and the zoo expects over 80,000 visitors throughout the month. This is a great way for people of all ages to see the park at night and experience the true feelings of the fall. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Have you been yet, Sarah? I haven't, but I've always wanted to go, and I think my roommate and I are going to go Friday night. There you go. So, night out on the town. Absolutely. We're in the thick of the season, so we might as yep. well. Yeah. You have to. All right. Well, we're going to send it over to Chad now with our Bryant update. Thanks, guys. While the number of jobs in Rhode Island remains at 1987 levels, the number of workers has grown by more than 11% since then from 515,000 to around 572,000, according to a report by WPRI.com. Bryant University professor Tobaldi is among the state's economic experts who see no recovery for several years. In other news, the Bryant University golf team is tied for ninth place after the first round of play at the 76th Annual New England Championships at the Captain's Course in Brewster, Mass. The Bulldogs shot a combined 313 on the first day and have three golfers tied for 39th place in the individual standings. Also, Bryant freshman Dana Pazerli was the Northeast Conference Men's Tennis Rookie of the Week for the second time this season. Back to you, Sarah. Now for a brand new segment to our broadcast this year. Each month, Mike will be interviewing a special guest. This month's guest is a relatively new addition to the Bryant community and he's already one of the most well-known faces on campus. With more on this story, here's Mike. 